was founded as a republic, the Constitution of the United States and the ten original amendments called the Bill of Rights were unique and completely revolutionary in the world. Ours was the first system that enshrined the people to govern themselves, a type of government for the people, by the people. The Bill of Rights cemented our civil liberties. And these are the rights that should never be threatened, undermined, or revoked. But hey, we live in a post-9-11 world now where we're told by politicians and an unquestioning media that we, were that we were attacked because we're the greatest democracy and had the most freedom in the world. But instead of preserving this bastion of freedom, our government opportunistically seized upon 9-11 to systematically pass legislation that eroded our most fundamental freedoms. Our representatives argued that sacrifices would have to be made in order to protect us from terrorism. Take a look. This is liberty within order, order within uh, that protects uh, liberty. I think that uh, uh, what the USA Patriot and all law enforcement activity does is try to protect our country, its foundation of law and order at a time when that security is missing in our world because of terrorists and because of criminals. Unfortunately, we may not always be able to tell you why that agent or agents are knocking on your door. And that is because of the nature of this investigation. I hope that you would understand that. Are we going to compromise civil rights for national security? Is there a chance that some of your civil liberties may slip while we guarantee the security of this country? Maybe. 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 Sacrificing liberty for security. That doesn't sound like a good trade-off. In fact, one of the founding fathers of this country, Benjamin Franklin, once said, he who sacrifices liberty for security deserves neither. But let's get back to what actually passed. The first piece of legislation was now, get ready for this doozy, the United and Strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act of 2001. Then updated in 2006, better known as the USA Patriot Act. And man, Orwell would be rolling in his grave if he could see the double speak coming from the establishment on this one. Because, you see, the Patriot Act was probably one of the most unpatriotic pieces of legislation ever passed, since it overrode so many of our rights, namely the First, Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, Eighth, and Fourteenth Amendments. And members of Congress only had seven hours to read the 345-page bill before voting on it. Now, the Patriot Act allowed unauthorized searches and seizures, massive surveillance and access of all your personal information, all under the guise of preventing terrorism. It also widened the NSA's surveillance powers, but don't worry, I'm sure the NSA officials understand that they need probable cause before they search people's homes, right? Check out what Michael Hayden, former director of the NSA, had to say about it. My understanding is that the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution specifies that you must have probable cause to be able to do a, a, a search that does not violate an American's right against uh, unlawful seizures and ser uh, searches and seizures. Actually, you, the you, Fourth you, Amendment actually uh, protects all of us against unreasonable search and seizure. But, that's the, what, the, that's but what the, it says. the measure is probable cause, I believe. The amendment says unreasonable search and seizure. But does it not say probable? The, the, no. the, the, the court standard, the legal unreasonable standard, search and seizure. the legal standard is probable cause. Actually, it does say probable cause, Michael, so you might want to read up on that Constitution and the amendments. Oh, but joy, it looks like these top brass of these agencies allotted to protecting this country don't even have a grasp on basic civics. That certainly makes me feel a whole lot better. So here, let me break it down some more for you. Starting with the Bush Doctrine, a phrase used to describe policy that basically said the U.S. has the right to preemptively invade a nation if they suspect that this nation may be a threat in the future. This was ultimately used to justify the invasion of Afghanistan. So essentially, the Bush Doctrine was a solid attempt to indoctrinate us into thinking that preemptive war is the right thing to do. Then it was FISA, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. It was originally instated to provide electronic surveillance for foreign intelligence, but it's so loosely defined, all it does pretty much is to provide justification to spy on pretty much anyone and everyone. And if you were at all inspired by the coming together of people from the Occupy Wall Street movement this year, last year, then you'll be very disheartened to know that Bill H.R. 347, a.k.a. the Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act, practically makes protesting your public officials a federal offense. Yep, the 
closest thing we've seen to banning public protests thus far. And most disturbingly, the National Defense Authorization Act, which was signed by Obama on New Year's Eve when America was literally drunk. The bill not only loosely defines the word terrorist, but it also allows for the indefinite detention of American citizens without due process. Not having due process sets America back about eight centuries. So here we are, 11 years after 9-11, and I'm left with nothing but questions and faced with nothing but hypocrisy. The government told all of us that this was necessary to protect us from terrorism, but if that were true, why are they using all of this to terrorize us?